I could see this beautiful soul as she was under the light. She was moving through this experience. She was crying. And I, I couldn't wait to ask her about what she'd experienced. And when she came out, she told me that she went on this past life journey that she was taken to all these different incarnations of her and some in eastern in eastern um in the eastern countries in eastern asia some in in africa and then she ended up landing at the time that i was started playing my native american drum she was brought back to a native american past life it didn't matter if it was with ceremony or technology but i had to c- come and make peace with where was that fear coming from where was that terror coming from and truly for me it was coming from a history of being taught about a fearful god i was taught that god was a punishing god and that i had to behave always in a certain way or i was damned to hell and so i really had to make peace with that this time around and i and it, i learned the lesson of sovereignty and what does that word sovereignty mean? And it was like, it was taking responsibility for taking on the fear of these negative entities instead of looking at them as my teachers. Welcome, beautiful beings, to season two of the Cosmic Love Antenna podcast with your host, Harrison Ma. This podcast sets the loving intention of creating the mystical space needed to pull back the layers restricting health, alignment, and love. Now let's walk you home to your cosmic spiritual heart space. Before we continue this beautiful chat today, wonderful souls, I need to jump in here to share something really exciting. If you've been following these episodes or you've been following me on social media, you know that I am in the process of releasing my first book, Your Cosmic Love Antenna, Define, Embody, and Emit Your Unique Frequency of Love. And at the time of this episode release, pre-orders are now open. If you have been pulled to this show, if you're looking to understand the what, the how, and the why of love, if you're looking to apply some of the tools connected to your chakras in a child, releasing religious trauma, ancestral healing, emotional release, and so much more, then this beautiful expression from my heart to yours is for you. If you are looking to channel more of your unique gifts and the divine frequency that you are, these pages will open all of this up. And if you're interested, all you need to do is go to cosmicloveantenna.com. That's cosmicloveantenna.com. And you can pre-order this book right now. If you pre-order, click on that link, put in your email, you're going to get access to some special gifts that I'm only offering to those who get in before I release it fully. These gifts are going to be some more channeled meditations, activations, and some other surprises from my heart to yours. So head over to cosmicloveantenna.com, pre-order this beautiful expression. And I can't wait to hear how it shifts your life. If you're listening to this after pre-order sales, that same link can be also used to go to the direct purchase link. Sending love, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of this episode today. Good morning, evening, afternoon, beautiful beings. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to a powerful episode today and a discussion that I'm really excited as always to share from my heart to all of you listening. I have two mystical and magical lovely ladies here today to help me dive into the theme of all things spirit tech, the good, the bad, and the beautiful. And we're going to break down exactly what all of this means in two seconds, but to set a loving framework and foundation here, if you are new to the show, If you are new to listening or you're watching live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, it's a pleasure to have you. This is the Cosmic Love Antenna. And the main intention here today is to dive into all the spiritual understandings around a topic that I know is going to help you awaken to a deeper level. If you get a bit of value out of this chat today, there are two ways you can support the show. You can head over to Apple, Spotify, leave your feedback and reviews. 
And you can also share this discussion out to a friend, a family member, or a lover that you think can open up to some of the concepts we talk about today. This episode is live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So what that means is if you're watching on either of these platforms throughout this discussion, if you have questions, if you have comments, please leave them down in the comment section. And I'm going to do my best to check the comments on all the platforms and we'll we'll jump in and I'll pose some of those comments or questions to the lovely ladies and myself as we move forward. What are we talking about today? So as alluded to, we're going to have a chat about all things spirit tech and what is the pros, what are the cons, and what are the beautiful nuances in what this really means for us? We're going to define what spirit tech is, why it's needed, what are the negative sides of it that we need to be mindful of, what are the what are technical or technological entities, and what is the new kind of relationship we build with this technology as we start to awaken our spiritual being. To help me dive into these spiritual deep dives today, these spiritual understandings. I have the lovely Etain Young, who's a conscious creator, a wellness and healing practitioner, and a quantum healer. Etain, do you want to say hello, my friend? Hello, Harry Harrison, and hello, everyone. And thank you for having me here. I'm excited about the topic today. And I can, I can feel your excitement, friend. We were just chatting about how both of us, it was hard to sleep last night because we were so excited to come and have this discussion. So thank you for being here, my friend. And I have the lovely Claudia Muriel. Claudia is a frequency medicine practitioner, a biohacker, and a loving educator and just a beautiful friend. Claudia, do you want to say hello, my friend? Hi, it's exciting to be here on the other side of the world in Boston, Massachusetts at three o'clock in the afternoon. I think it's so cool. And for all the people tuning in, I've had both of these lovely ladies on the show before. And when you listen to the podcast, I'll put the show notes for the other discussions that we've had, both on the Healy that Etain uses and the Lucia Light that Claudia works with. So with all that loving foundation, I want to get into the conversation today. And again, if you are listening and watching on all of the social platforms, please leave your comments and questions as we flow throughout this chat and I'll I'll weave them in where I can. I think a good place to start is defining what spirit tech is for people that are probably new to this term and maybe haven't had the opportunity to open their hearts to working with a practitioner that works with their technology. So I'll I'll give a quick overview of my perspective on it and then I'll throw, I'll throw it to Claudia and Etain and give their views. Put very simply, I would define any sort of spirit tech as a technology that is used with a loving intention with a usually a practitioner that's trained in that technology to help the individual soul who is coming in to heal, to awaken, to move through layers of illusion and separation and shadow that maybe that person was having difficulty moving through prior, right? And the technology for a time, and we'll talk about this later, for a time sort of inserts its space between the the shadow and the person to help them move through it. So Claudia, I'll throw to you first. Anything you want to add to that definition? Uh yeah, I, I really love the idea as of spirit technology supporting us. It's that little sort of tiny extra, you know, support on your back that it's just like a touch of support, but then you get to go even like a hundred times further than you thought you could with just that like slight touch of support. I'll, I'll get Etain to talk about the Healy, but um, Claudia, do you want to quickly give an overview of you work with the Lucia light for people new? And again, I'll put the show in the, in the show notes, but just a quick overview here. What is the Lucia light? Uh, I wish I could, I could see it better. 
hanging over there this yeah, time. Behind you. The, yeah. The Lucia light is a um, strobing light. It has two types of light bulbs in it. And the strobes of the light, which is pure white light, strobes at different frequencies and it invites, it doesn't push your brain. It invites your brain to join it at these different frequencies so that um, you can move out of beta brainwave into alpha and theta brainwave. And then once you join the light in those brainwaves, it, it teaches you to be able to hold those brainwaves for longer. So I like to call it a personal trainer for your brainwaves. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful, beautiful description of it. And I would just add for people tuning in, I, I own a Lucia Light myself and for, for a time was doing sessions with people and hosting it with people. And another way of describing it is it's a very psychedelic journey of, of light into your, into your unconscious in many ways. And we'll speak about this later, but uh, the Lucia Light invites you in a very in very certain kind of magical entity that you can work with to help you come back to deeper parts of your, of your soul. But, um, we'll, we'll pause it there and we'll talk about that later. Uh, Etain, I'd love to hear your definition of spirit tech, if you want to add anything, and then I'd love to hear about what is the Healy and how does it fit into this? So, um, my, my personal understanding about spirit tech is about a tool. Right. Um, I see that as a tool that would help us to um, accelerate our journey of growth, also evolution. Um, it, it is a tool, um, like with uh, the same with everything, if used correctly, could really help us in our involvement in the journey. So um, it's a useful tool, I would say. And the Healy, and I'm running one, as you can see, so it's a very small device and it is. It has the ability to basically allow, um, there's two sides of Healy. It is a very um, amazing device because it can allow the physical um, support through bioenergetic field. Um, on the quantum level, it has the ability to create or scan the frequency of a bioenergetic field of a person and allow the resonance to happen on the information field level to allow um to allow um any shift that needs to be happen to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and that and to jump in here, Etain, it's a beautiful description for people new to bioenergetic fields. A a another way of describing it would be you know your subtle energy bodies or the the frequency if people are aware of maybe the heart math institute the frequency in the field that is more than your physical body that let's say if you have a unresolved trauma from your childhood that is that is that is holding itself in in your emotional body that is more than your physical body then a device like the healy would come in and help you diagnose that because most of us and this is the important piece here and we'll talk about this next a lot of these things are unconscious and just because it's unconscious doesn't mean it's not impacting your life, right? It's it, by the fact of the word, we are unaware of it. We're not conscious of it, but how the unconscious gets our attention is it usually projects itself into the outside world. And we think that life is happening to us, but in reality, it's just our internal world trying to get our attention and a, a device like the freak that like the Healy sort of comes in, in that middle ground. So thank you for that overview, my friend. Let's get into some of the nuances of this today. And I guess where I want to start with that definition and understanding of what these technologies are, let's dive more into why do we even need them? And I gave an overview of the Healy just then. So let's, let's flip it to the Lucia light quickly, and then we'll come back to the Healy. Claudia, let me ask you, as someone who's worked with Lucia Light and as someone who has received the light and worked with clients, why is this spirit tech needed for someone who is on their spiritual journey? It's not needed. 
you don't have to do any of it. I don't have to go to the gym, but I'm better for going to the gym. I'm healthier. I'm stronger. I desire it. I'm curious about what's available to me. So I would say to be, to be curious, you know, I'm someone who's always wanted to know what my potentials are. I'm not satisfied with status quo. And so I think that the Lucia light is a beautiful way to really explore what, what I'm capable of, what's my potential. And it's a beautiful, it's really truly is like when I say beautiful, it is beautiful to access those parts of my soul. Like you talked about that are stunning. The beauty that you see under the light opens my heart, opens my mind. Why wouldn't I want to do that? Why wouldn't I want to share that with people? It brings up a interesting component. And for people that have listened to this show before, I speak a lot about not just the soul's journey, but the, the synchronicities that come along that soul's journey. Right? If we're very attuned to what our spiritual essence and our heart is saying, then in a, at any given moment or any given day, we can we can ask ourselves, what is needed in this moment, right? What is what is going to be for my highest good? And I know it sounds like in your experience, Claudia, but I, I've 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 experienced this in my journey. That spirit tech comes in like this; it sort of filters in as the entity that it is, and it's like, oh, this thing that you're moving through today, yes. We could spend some time in meditation and you, you could just sit down in the sun. And like you said, we don't have to go there, but there may be something more here for you, right? There may be something more here within the interaction with these technologies that can add a little bit of extra special source to that shadow that you're moving through, right? Etain, anything coming up for you that you want to add to this in terms of why why even go here with spirit tech in general? I, I just love Claudia, Claudia's analogy about the gym because seriously, we don't really need any tool, right? I mean, we have the ability to uh, evolve, but why not if there's something that's there to help us? And, uh, you know, and it, it's almost like, you know, if you have, if you have a car, would you walk? <laughs> from one, one place to another, it just saves so much time. And we all have limited time on earth. And it's important to be, you know, really exploring our own potential so we can get out of that limiting belief or programs and really live a very, very fulfilled life. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to live a, a good life and a fulfilled life. We're here to create, to serve the world and, and you know, just make the world a better place. And I just, I just feel like just, Doing that for ourselves, rarely contributing to humanity. Mm -hmm. And I like to also add as well, like with the with, with the with the device and devices and tools and modalities, they just really un, unravel many layers in a very short time. Yeah, and that's amazing. And, and that's that's sort of where I want to go next here, Etienne. So. The, this conversation around technology, it because of its specificity, and let me let me just reset here for people popping into the live channels on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. If you have any questions and comments that pop up, pop them in, and I'm checking, and, and we can add your voice into the show. But with this specificity of the technology that we have, for a lot of people in the world. And I say this with so much compassion, and I say this as someone who has also walked this path. It, it there is, there are some big leaps that need to be made to start to awaken to what we actually are, or start to awaken to, if you want to call it, the real reality. And sometimes those leaps are quite large for a lot of people, right? Sometimes the the wound that someone is working with or the specific root of the wound that someone is working with is very hard to move through. So maybe I'll throw you here first, Etain. Speak to the specificity of the Healy and how it's able to help us 
have clarity around the the actual root cause of something that's showing up in our life. Yeah. So um, I feel like with the Healy, because of its um, quantum ability to do the scanning of the information field, um, coming from the quantum perspective of uh, entanglement, it has the ability to um, scan the information and then harmonize that particular information. So I'll give you an example. Uh, for someone who have probably been um, living quite unconsciously about a certain negative pattern, say, for example, perhaps being reactive over a certain thing, um, the, the cool thing about the device is that it will pick up the information and the information could provide a lot of information for contemplation, right? And it could be something along the line where, um, you know, number one, it brings awareness. Number two, it brings contemplation. The cool thing about that is it will have the ability to then harmonize. And through the harmonization, the information resonates on the quantum level. And for a lot of people that we worked with, um, it's a very gentle process for them because they started to realize that they feel different. And from there, it aroused their curiosity as to why they feel different in a certain way or why do they suddenly become the driver of their own thoughts in terms of, hey, I noticed that, you know, I usually, it's quite reactive about this situation, but I'm not today. Why is that? Mm -hmm. And then from there, that further um, evolution, if you yeah. like to call it, can occur. It expands. It does. So I want to pull out a word that you said and then chuck this to Claudia. You said awareness and observation. And for people that, uh, again, I'll put this in the show notes. We talked a lot about this in the Healy episode, but from a quantum perspective, just for new people, <laughs> purely observing the act of observation is an act of creation onto itself. So by purely observing that which we want to move through, i.e. a shadow, a wound, a trauma, by observing it, and I'll add an asterisk here, with love, it can really start to shift us into a new reality in which that shadow doesn't have hold of us anymore. So I want to throw this to you, Claudia. What have you seen in relation to the spirit tech that is the Lucia light? How, what is its role in the illumination and the observation here? It is illumination completely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it is a light. And a lot of people don't quite understand. A lot of people ask me, so, so what did it do? And how did it work? And how do I know if it worked? And what's happening? And I tell people, don't get attached to the session itself. It's not just about the session, but the light allows your brain. So I'm really into brain health and brain waves to move into the observer. It takes you out of you know, the always already thinking, and it moves you into becoming the observer of your life and how by slowing you down. It's funny, it's a paradox because it's the speed of light, but it's the speed of light that slows you down because it takes you out of the super fast brainwave. And so when you're leaving the session, I tell people, please journal, be aware, take it in because really it's the session. It's like when the session ends and countless time after time, I get messages. Oh my gosh, you know, for the next four days, I was able to, you know, control my eating habits. People have texted me and said, I lost 90 pounds since yeah. I had a session with you, you know? So it's, it's, and so many people are always trying to figure it out. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's about being. <laughs> How do you explain being? <laughs> I, I like, I like that. Always trying to figure it out. That's, that's how we, it's it, just, again, for people tuning in, as soon as you shift into, I need to figure this out, you know, you've shifted out of a spiritual context back into the mind that's, that's trying to logically add up the experience into a number set that equates to a certain outcome and in no judgment. I, I also do that. I see it catch myself, but it's a good, it's a good indicator to watch out for when you know you're shifting out of that frequency. Let's, let's shift here now. So we've, 
spoken a lot. I think this this gives a lot of pros. We've got a lot of beautiful pros around why spirit tech is needed, and I'm sure more will come up. But let's let's speak now speak now about the negatives and the potential negatives and the potential bad side, the potential cons that we need to be mindful for when we're using spirit tech along our awakening journey and why having an awareness of these can actually support us even more right help us lean in even more so i think where we should, we could start with this is codependency and i'll, I'll frame this and i'll throw to you here first claudia and then we'll hear from etain again i i'll just share my own experience when i first got the lucia light i would not do any meditation unless it was under the light and at first this ex excelled my awakening and this illuminated many of the things that we were just speaking about but it got to the point where much like a relationship with a man or a woman i became codependent on the light that it was allowing me to illuminate and I feel this can be, this can, we can fall into this trap with all of these kinds of devices and even outside of spiritual tech, you know, biohacking in general, I think we have to be mindful of this. So Claudia, how do we move through this within this spiritual understanding with this spiritual tech? How do we move through codependency with it? What's the solution here? Yeah. And, and I do have to point that it can be with spiritual tech or it can be with a healer, you know? Yeah. There was a time in my life where I was like, I can't make a choice in my life unless I talk to my energy healer first or have a session. And oh my gosh, I'd get anxious if I couldn't get a session with my, you know, energy healer. I couldn't make a choice. I was like stuck. So it really is through any type of dependency, codependency, like you were talking about. And I really think it's important to once again find that strength within ourselves, which I call intuitive confidence. And to, you know, take the time to build the muscle of intuitive confidence or else it's all null. It's all, you know, a mute point. Healy, Lucia Light, Energy Healer, Reiki Master. Yeah. It's a, again, the muscle analogy comes back and um, hold that thought. We'll come back to that because I want to ask more about it. Etain, how do we, maybe we can, you can speak to the Healy perspective side of this. How do we move through this? This, this trap, I want to say, of using the Healy specifically as something that we're always turning to rather than, you know, helping, helping, using it to help us get to the root, but then maybe realizing that it is helping us build a muscle that was there the whole time. What comes yeah. up? So for me, I feel like the most important thing is about intention, start with the intention to to basically shift the heel and and also the intuition as well and so very important to do that and the cool thing about healing is that once the intention is set and focused the information is accurate right and over time the intuition also developed personally for myself the intuition has gone so many fold over the last few years from using the healing um, with the increased awareness we usually would have um kind of a uh, understanding on when we need it or not, I suppose. But again, I, I will go back to intention because I think it's important to have the awareness itself and consciousness to basically allow our body to kind of, you know, respect the body's journey or the soul journey to, to home. It's almost as if <laughs> this was like any other spiritual conversation and the same rules apply, right? In intuition, intention, and really honoring that being inside of us that is mirroring itself through these technologies. Because that's, you know, at, if we want to zoom all the way out, when we use the Lucia light, the Healy, or any other kind of spiritual technology, the light that is illuminated, they're not giving it to us. They're just, again, they're being that beautiful coach, if we want to use that analogy, to walk us home right as rumi would say so let's let's go into another direction here and thank you ladies for really hitting on that intuition piece and i'd really encourage anyone that's using any kind of 
spiritual technology, always come back to that and it will tell you today. I really need to go see the lovely Etain and have a Healy session. I really need to go see Claudia and illuminate with the Lucia light. But it's also going to say today, I don't need to do any of that. I just need to go out in the sun and open my heart. Claudia, at the start of this chat, I, I talked about the Lucia light and entities. And we've done, again, I'll put these in the show notes, we've done many conversations for people new to the show, the many, many chats around negative entities and evil entities and demonic entities. And as we go into the spiritual world, this is a conversation that we need to have. And with these, these technologies, these spirit tech, I, I, I cannot have this conversation without bringing this in because this is this is a part of it right much like i'll give the example much like we would go to a medicine ceremony maybe like ayahuasca and and we're vetting the medicine ceremony with one how many people are there and two the shaman themselves we need to be mindful of the entities they may have or the entities that the people i'm in the container with that what they may have I believe the same sort of conversation needs to be had with the tech that we're using. So I'll throw to you here first, my friend, Claudia, what comes up around this for you that's that's important to make note of? Well, I just happen to have gone to medicine ceremonies for the first time in three years and dealt with exactly that. I was terrified. I was fearful of like, what if I have a hard, scary, bad, negative entity come up in my ceremony or, you know, with, with just to extend it with the technology. So it didn't matter if it was with ceremony or technology, but I had to c- come and make peace with where was that fear coming from? Where was that terror coming from? And truly for me, it was coming from a history of being taught about a fearful God. I was taught that God was a punishing God and that I had to behave always in a certain way or I was damned to hell. And so I really had to make peace with that this time around. And I, and it, I learned the lesson of sovereignty. And what does that word sovereignty mean? And it was like, it was taking responsibility for taking on the fear of these negative entities instead of looking at them as my teachers. Yeah. Let's let's pause there for a second, Claudia, because this is so much that you just shared in that little sentence. I would encourage listeners that are new to this entity world, I would highly encourage you look up the archetype that is the Imago Day, and to give it a bit of uh, explanation here, your Imago Day, put simply, is your relationship to a higher power is, is God, and you can answer, you can, you can address this archetype with one simple question. Is your God something outside of you or is your God something inside of you? I.e., as Claudia just highlighted, is your power something outside of you or is your power internally? And depending on how you answer this question, the Imago Day is important because it is the archetype that all other archetypes are born from. So depending on where you answer, how you answer this question, everything else in your life is going to be anchored from this root belief. So bringing this back to entities and the technology, you know, let's just use the example of we go into a Lucia Light session and I have all the beautiful visuals and I'm seeing it all and it's moving through me. If my Imago Dei archetype is one of an external power, we can now go back to the codependency conversation and we can very, very quickly see that, oh, that Lucia light gave me something. That Lucia light gave me that powerful experience that I can't have created that. That mustn't have been something inside of me. That's something outside of me. So I just I share this because this is the flip side. This is the flip side of this understanding. Etain, what comes up for you around all this? 
Yeah, for me, I I see I see any kind of shadows or um, fear or any kind of negative entities. For me, I personally feel that everything is inside of us, um, and and that it it is to embrace for the frequency to come up that is shadow. It is for it's actually an invitation for us to look into that and to move across it so I'm also into Jenki so personally in Jenkis there are 64 different types that's um, derived from Ichi and for each keys there are three different bands of frequency right there's a shadow there's a gift and then there's a city so every shadow contains a gift every every um, negative aspect of us is an invitation for us to look deeply to ourselves so we can start, you know, moving into a different band of frequency. So it is an opportunity, um, a very tremendous opportunity for healing and, you know, um, evolutions of souls, in my opinion. And I used to be really scared of it. So now I just pause and I ask myself, okay, what am I need to look into it here? What do I have to do? Is there something I can do to, you know, move away from that or to heal yeah. from the emotion? This this gets me so excited, this topic. I am I'm so something about it. I must have had a past life where I, I worked with this kind of understanding. Cause whenever this topic comes up, a part of me just expands. And I think a big part of it is the large misconceptions and the misunderstandings. And both of you are highlighting, you know understandings that we should have around it i just i want to i want to point out something here but i just want to say hello to suzanne and uh, anna in the chat on facebook thank you for i see your beautiful comments and happy it's resonating so let's keep let's keep moving with this because it's because it's resonating with me you said you gave the beautiful example of the gene keys e team and again for people new to the show I've done a chat on breaking down the gene key, so I'll put that in the show notes as well if you're interested. But it, it brings up another sort of point here. And I see this in medicine ceremonies with plant medicines a lot, but we could apply this the same situation to these spirit tech. If I, let's say I go have a session with Etain with a Healy, and, and I do have a lot of shadows and deep trauma, maybe a past life comes up where I was abused and assaulted or killed in a very horrific way. And that trauma moves through me. Again, based off my Imago Dei archetype, what I could do, and I, and this is the example that I see in medicine ceremonies, what I could say is that, oh, the medicine is bad. The medicine gave me that entity experience. So what I'm going to do now, how I'm going to address that shadow is I'm going to cut that medicine out of my life. I'm going to say that that's the thing that did that, that brought the shadow. So if I can cut that out, then that shadow won't harass me anymore. Won't, won't bother me anymore. But I'm wondering, I'll throw you Claudia, what is the, what is the hazard in this? What is the hazard in, you know, whether it's the plant medicine or cutting out these spirit texts that evoked the shadow to come up what's the what's the problem with this approach well it's like cutting off your own nose to spite your own face <laughs> because that was one of the biggest lessons i got at these last ceremonies i i realized oh someone's violently throwing up thank you i was like oh my god that's all in us it's in us anyway and we have the opportunity to work with it inside of medicine, inside of a technology, inside of a spiritual healer, or in the hospital with cancer or with an autoimmune disease. It's going to come up one way or another. It's not the medicine. It's not the technology. It's part of our spiritual DNA and our path and our journey on this lifetime. And I got, wow, we are so lucky. We get to choose how we work with it. Like I have the awareness and the gift because of the medicines and the technology. And I get to choose, like I, I do, I get to choose. Do I want to get cancer and learn how to heal from cancer? 
or do I want to throw up violently during a medicine retreat? Or do I want to sob my heart out under the Lucille light and get it out? But mm. I get to choose. Yeah. The power yeah. of choice. Yeah. The power of choice. And we're, again, you've said it, we're lucky. We're so lucky. And I just want to underline that point that Claudia brought up. It's going to come up. That's This is what I was sort of laying the foundation for, for Claudia to answer is it will come up. It's not going to, it's you cutting out that thing it again. I, I let me use the the Freud quote. Right? Our our unconscious, our unconscious will will project out into our outside world, and until we make the unconscious conscious, it will it will create it will direct our life, and we will call it fate. And that's what will happen here when we cut out that thing. It'll still start projecting, but now it's just going to find another outlet, i.e. A relationship that we have, i.e., a addiction to a substance, i.e., you know, insert here. Etain, anything you want to add to this, my friend? Yeah, I just want to throw questions back to the mix, right? Friends of flow, good or bad, it's all question of reality, isn't it? And again, you know, it's back to the perspective. Um, and you know, having that, um, having those tools that can help us to evolve so much more quickly and allow us to feel more conscious about ourselves also help us to make that choice more with more clarity um, and understanding um, in you know really in deciding what's really the best for us yeah this, this topic's making me so excited i think i'm going to jump under the lucia light after this chat um let's i want to ask throw you back to Claudia now I want to ask you about so we just I want we'll come back to more negative entity conversations because there's another topic I want to hit on around this but before we do let's let's flip the flip the coin and talk about the the positive polarity the positive uh loving entities that we can open ourselves up to when we use these kinds of spirit tech right and I'm going to give an example and I want to hear Claudia speak to this when I've used the Lucia light, because of its resonance with the heart chakra, I've had certain interactions with certain kinds of loving entities. And in my experience, I had one very profound interaction with an angel that came in as I was just opening up my heart. And I just had this deep, one of my first experiences with an angel that just sort of moved through me and just the only way I can describe it is that it exploded my heart space and the Lucia light was a, was a opening to that. So it's an example of being in that frequency, being in that loving state sent an invitation, just like we're talking before about the negative shadows, but now the, the positive side of the coin invited in the angel to come be with me in that, in that setting. So Claudia, I know you've had, you've worked with, the the light guides. So I'm wondering if you could speak to this. Absolutely. I had I did a session for myself last night. I probably do a session on myself once a month or when I feel really called to do a session. I used to do it quite a bit like you did when I first got it too. And um, something that's been happening lately while I go under the light is um, it would be hard for people to understand, but I'll try and explain. There are these fractal patterns that are all encompassing and you're seeing and you're sort of surrounded and embodied in these. And then there's a break in them. And lately there have been break. There's a break. And I start to see these these sort of pillars of iridescent light. And I've seen them a couple of times now, but it almost feels like my eyes are opening and I even have to check and make sure my eyes are closed. But I know it's a knowing, it's my intuition that those are the light guides that are working with what I believe to be my light and the space that I create. And so I, and I've definitely had interactions with angels with the light because you are completely, you know, on point. It's this, the light is this beautiful heart opening space. And I've seen people just start crying under the light. And I tell people, you may cry while you're under the light, let it flow. And it's because they always tell me it's because my heart was just so full of love. So yes, it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. I have another story I want to share, but I want to hear about Etain. Etain, have you, maybe with the Healy, have you had any sort of interactions with 
you know, any sort of loving entities, whether it's spirit guides or totem animals or anything that's come up for you? For me, it's always been a feeling. Um, it's a feeling of embodied love. And um, and when it happens, I get a lot of bodily sensations all around. So that was very, very good. And I just feel like it's such a it's such a beautiful thing that we get that interactions. And I also wanted to share that, you know, whatever that we encounter, shadows or lights, they're all part of us. Like they're part of our soul fragments that's, you know, we're, we're, we're all part of the one, right? So that's the beautiful part of yourself. And you see an angel or the other part would be the part that's invitation for healing. So, you know, it's just lovely yeah. to be experiencing that. That's that's a mantra that I play with with whatever comes to me, right? The shadow, all these beautiful loving entities, you know, there is a part of me that is in them. And when we accept that, it allows us to surrender through any sort of belief or fear that might be coming up that's keeping us in separation to whatever the teaching is in that moment. I want to share an experience, but just to quickly point out. Uh, Anna, thank you for all the beautiful comments. Rose, I see you there in Facebook. If you're joining on LinkedIn, YouTube, and in the Facebook group, if you have any comments or questions as we go, please pop them in. I'm trying to add them in where I can. I I want to share another experience here that just came up as you both were speaking uh, around entities and these spirit technologies. And this was actually a um, experience of a client that I was working with and uh, with the Lucia Light. And without going too deep into the into the whole experience, I combined some sound with the Lucia tech, the spirit tech. I was using a, a Native American drum and a Native American rattle that I use in my own uh, ceremonies. And I could see this beautiful soul as she was under the light. She was moving through this experience. She was crying. And I, I couldn't wait to ask her about what she'd experienced. And when she came out, she told me that she went on this past life journey that she was taken to all these different incarnations of her and some in eastern in eastern um in the eastern countries in eastern asia some in in africa and then she ended up landing at the time that i started playing my native american drum she was brought back to a native american past life and she sat down and had a, had a conversation with that past life ancestor that she was interacting with. And I share this not just to highlight the entity conversation and how we, we open up portals with these, these technologies and how they connect us to these parts of ourselves, but also, and maybe I'll throw you here, Claudia, because I, I feel like you could speak to this too. My addition of sound, right? My addition of sound into this this already, you know, opening of the spirit tech added another dimension, added another dimension that again, I'll just use the word opened another portal for the person that was receiving to step through. So Claudia, do you have experience with this? Oh, I'm so excited you asked about this. <laughs> also like chills, all of the things. Yes. Yes, because I do layer um, the Lucia light with the Healy. And I did a session for someone, someone had been coming to me and music. I also layer in different Hertz music and would love to um, speak back to that podcast you did with Smile. Uh, that's a great, and I'll be using their technology. But um, I, I had been doing a Lucia light sessions for a client. And then I layered in the Healy once I got it. And she came up out of her session and she said, I don't know what you did this time, but whatever this little box is, I have to have it. It's different. Like she sh and, and I did the session and I tend to do the session positive thoughts a lot when I work with the Lucia Light from the Healy. Um, and so, it, yes, layering of all the different things, whether it's a drum or a rattle or another piece of tech or your Reiki um, really does add to the experience. It just it it speaks to the multidimensional being that we are, right? We're not <laughs> we're not just one thing. There's always pieces of us that are resonating on different frequencies that we can speak to. 
Etain, before we move on here, do you have any experience with this layering or adding in different modalities? Yeah, for sure. So uh, personally with the Healy, this already kind of a multi-dimension device itself. It has a physical uh, capability to um, balance the cells in the body, which is from a scientific point of view through microcurrent. And basically just imagine our body encompass uh, like trillions of little batteries, which are our cells, right? And when those cells, batteries go out of balance, then we are not feeling great. So the ability of the Healy itself would be um, delivering the microcurrent to uh, balance the bioenergetic field of those cells and therefore bringing uh, or reducing any kind of discomfort on the physical body, right? And on the other layer, there would be the um, the uh, quantum level, which is the harmonization of frequency in our field, uh, which is our aura. You could say them aura, chi or prana in different cultures. Uh, personally, I am also trained in psyche. So with my partners, and we call them partners in psyche um, context, we basically, I use the psyche to very much open up their belief system um, and changing the subconscious belief. So it's a very quick process to basically bring awareness, um, allow anybody to that would like to change to have a new program in their brain to get that done first. And then we dive into the Healy to look at any deep unconscious patterns. It could be any ancestral karma, karmic or anything like that. And that definitely add to the experience because I was uh, using solely just the Healy. And then when I was training Psyche, it kind of just bring it to another level, Yeah, which is amazing. I get the image as you're speaking, Etain, of a shaman from, you know, hundreds of years ago that, and this is really where we're, we're just, you know, time isn't linear, it's cyclical. So we're, we're just repeating the same <clears throat> understanding, you know, when someone in a tribe was dealing with some kind of psychosis or some kind of, you know, very deep psychological challenge they weren't taken and i say this with so much love they weren't taken to such you know an isolated specific practitioner that just worked with you know one part of their essence what were they most likely taken to they were taken to a shaman who viewed that being as a not just as a mental at that challenge not just as a mental challenge but viewed it as a mental emotional physical and spiritual element to move through and what that means for the practitioner is that they opened their medicine bag and tuned into their intuition and asked themselves what is needed at this moment in time do i need to sprinkle in some some psyche do i need to sprinkle in the healy do i need to sprinkle in my voice do i need to sprinkle in you know channeling some frequencies through my heart right it's it's about you know as we are, we as the practitioners i know there's a lot of you listening the tool is beautiful, but I want to say this for everyone to hear. What is more important is the frequency of love that you're channeling through it. And you will know where to direct that love if you keep asking, right? Do I need to channel my love through the light? Do I need to channel my love through the healing in the moment? So it's this constant dance of asking, you know, what is needed for this relationship to, in the case of someone that's looking for healing, to heal right? One more topic I want to hit on before we finish with you lovely ladies. And I'm really grateful to be here with you. I can't have this conversation with many people. So I'm really honored to share your souls and this chat with everyone tuning in. The last component of this conversation is when I look at the world at the moment, there is this if you want to call it agenda of pushing the human into a more programmable, technological, controllable thing, right? You look, I'll give the example of, you know, the World Economic Forum and the whole thing. It's everything that's going on with that, right? It's without going into all things conspiracy conversation. It's very easy to look at that from the outside uh, lens 
and see that there is a very real uh, push to make people isolated components of a bigger technological mechanism that we can control. So without going into a whole big conversation around this, how can we avoid, right, as, as people that are, are using technology, as we've talked about through this whole conversation in very not just loving and positive but spiritual ways, how can people that are justifiably concerned about, you know, these big shifts in the collective, how can they go into interactions with someone like Etain or Claudia that are using these technologies in loving ways? How can they go in and avoid maybe some of the, I want to call them, we'll call them entities that are vying for control? I'll throw to you first, Claudia. Well, it's interesting because recently I've noticed that I, I, I always do a lot of work on myself. I'm always doing a lot of work on myself in various different ways, technology, plant medicines, programs. And so I've noticed recently that the people in my sessions are going even deeper. Um, physical stuff is starting to get healed, which I never had been able to hold the space for before. And then I thought, oh, the technology is the same. I've shifted. And so it's a tool. The technologies are a tool. I'm still holding the space. You know, there are people that can go and have a Lucia light session and someone sets up the light and walks out the room. I'm like, what? I would never do anything like that. So I continue to grow myself as an intuitive channel, as a space holder, as a healer, through healing myself so that I can hold a bigger container to help people heal. I just happen to love technology and that's my tool. That's my rattle is my Healy. My drum is the light. It's my expression. Mm. Your, and what I get from that, Claudia, is your light is coming up to meet the darkness, right? Your consciousness is expanding to meet the, the shadow that's coming up in the collective, right? Etain, what comes up for you around this? Um, I feel like... Um... I think just basically uh, at the end of the day, it's down to the intention, right? I know there's yeah. a lot of things happening on the outside. I would just say be selective on what we choose to feed our soul and our body and our brain with. Uh, that would be the most important thing. And also with the technology, we, you know, it, it just really helps us. Like I would say maybe get a Healy. Like a Healy is not exclusive for just practitioner. It is available for anybody who wants to own one. Because it's a home device that is specifically designed by the inventor who owned a company called Time Waver, Marcus Make, and his role of his mission of uh, invented he inventing a Healy is to make sure that everybody at home can can own one and they can help themselves uh, and be more aware of their own well being. Um, and I guess you know, for me personally, like my evolutions in my own journey right so yeah i think be specific on what we want to feed our soul and our brain um and yeah i see this i just want to welcome ali thanks for popping into the chat my friend i see the uh itang when i hear this conversation again coming back to intention i think as the world starts to shift into different movements right whatever it is whatever's happening in the world again coming back to that internal power that's inside of us no matter what's happening when you walk into a practitioner that's working with the healy or the lucia light or whatever the spiritual tech is a good practitioner that's going to be the first thing that they do right they're going to set the foundation and the intention of the container that you're moving through so I just, I wanted to bring this up because I know there's a lot of fear out there in the world and, and I don't want souls to project that fear onto the technology, right? I, you come back to your hearts, right? Come back to your intention, come back to your intuition that we talked about earlier. It's going to guide you to the spaces and places and the people behind the technology that you need to be in, right? No matter what's happening in the outside world. There's another element that, I want to hit on before we finish 
And it's going back to this idea that a lot of this technology, it, it takes us deep very quickly, <clears throat> right? The Lucia light in my experience, you know, I, 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 I definitely would account it to the light work that I am now, right. And the, and the speed in which my awakening has, in, has, has moved through. And in this comment, what it brings up, and we spoke about this in our religious trauma conversation, Claudia, there is a belief in certain spiritual communities, specifically religious spiritual communities, that it's the sentence of we must chop chop wood and carry water. And it's the idea that spiritual connection, spiritual devotion, spiritual enlightenment, awakening, whatever you want to call it, it needs to come with the hard work. It needs to come with the forcing and and the showing up and and the patience. And while I do think there are components of this that are very true, especially the patience, I think there's a big, a larger conversation we can have with spirit tech. So I'll throw to you, Claudia, what comes up for you around this? Um, what comes up for me is how limiting that is and how I definitely was uh, signed up for that experience. I had said I would never, you know, partake in plant medicine because it was cheating, that I was going to meditate under a tree for years and get it that way and whip my back until I get there. And, and one time during um, one of my medis combo, which is an intense medicine, I, I, I heard, why do you keep wanting to learn from pain, Claudia? Why don't you learn to learn from love? And I was like, oh my God, okay, I'll do that. You know, and started looking more into Tantra and pleasure and breathing. <laughs> so why, why do we have to learn from austerity? It's, I want to underline this. This. So let me explain it from this angle. I, the heart of God that's inside of us is made of the divine twin flame. And the divine twin flame is the divine feminine, which I would equate to as the love, and I would, and then it's made of the divine masculine, what I, which I would equate as the light, which is the the doing and the working, which we could connect to the cutting wood and and carrying water. And while that is needed, right, we need to take inspired action because we don't want to just be in the feminine flow all the time. What this belief takes out as Claudia is beautifully highlighting is it takes out the spiritual awakening that comes in just the being in just the being under a light and receiving or going to see lovely etain and receiving the healy frequencies and not needing to do anything all at all there's just as much awakening and just as much spiritual expansion in the receiving and the non-doing as there is in the inspired action and the doing etain what comes up for you around this? Yeah, so I, I just, yeah, for me, it was about belief system. So, and and um, it's about the choices that we have, you know, um, and we have the power to make that choice. That's how powerful we are because we have that consciousness um, to to decide how we want to actually tackle how, where we want to go. So, um yeah, so I think going back to the heart space to really just kind of question ourselves when there's any kind of doubt or negative belief comes up, always go back and ask, is that true? Is that is that is that a true statement? Or is it something that is probably something that's being given to us when before we were seven, before our brainwave, um, you know, when our, our brainwave was, you know, basically just sitting on the data up until age of seven or eight, right? And that's pretty much formed the most of us, like our subconscious belief. And that's 95% of the time where we'll be operating in our uh, belief system based on the subconscious every day. Yeah. Yeah. And because this is a very deep and spiritual conversation that we're having, I would say, don't stop there. <laughs> don't stop there with the zero to seven, meaning, let's use the example of the religious programming that we've talked about a lot today let's say that you're listening to this conversation and like okay fair enough etain fair enough harrison yes there are a lot of religious programmings that 
that you know that keep me in a certain belief system that's restricting but i didn't grow up in a religious household i didn't grow up in a culture religious culture yes okay that's true but now let me ask you what do you think the likelihood that someone in your ancestral line or a past life that you had 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 that same conditioning had that religious programming and the answer to that is highly highly likely right if you just look at again and i never want to just throw anger and hatred on religious systems it's not the religious systems they all have beautiful mystical loving foundations it's the fear consciousness within them that is perpetuated by man that these stories and these beliefs continue right and unfortunately most of us down our ancestral lines our past life incarnations have most likely had at least one persecution right have had one kind of whether it be a witch trial whether it be you know being burnt in a barn because of your certain mystical system whatever it is so i just share that not to perpetuate fear but i share that to expand awareness right and when you do sessions like the healy and when you do sessions like the lucia light these are the very real experiences that could come up for you to see right these are the very real very real karmic uh energies that need your attention claudia anything you want to add to this i just really want to add to it um resonance uh, you know resonance is what brought us together resonance is what heals and shakes out the negative flushes up what needs to be healed and i think it's such a beautiful amazing opportunity to have all of these tools at our fingertips to bring us together to we're all sharing with each other, you know, everything you've just shared about sound and healing. And I'm, I'm not going to be afraid to take people to those shadows in the light anymore. It, this has expanded who I am as a practitioner and my heart is just bursting. Like it's awesome. I feel it, my friends. Etain, any final thoughts you want to share? Yeah. I, I just want to, you know, support, you know, Claudia's point, like this these tools brought us together, basically. And I didn't know about Lucia Light until I met Claudia and she mentioned about it. And then she shared her knowledge about how using the Lucia Light and the Healy and just brought the whole experience to another level. And I went and tried myself. Oh my gosh, it was just so profound, right? Because that is from scientific point of view, a neurotransmitter. <laughs> and that's just amazing how, you know, we can, we now have a chance and technology to have all these to help us to, you know, to guide us back to love. Yeah. And that's just amazing. What a beautiful little, what a beautiful little circle and finish point there, Yiting. I, I'll share this final thought and then we'll wrap all this up. We've only spoken today about two technologies. Healy and Lucia Light. And I encourage everyone listening, if this has inspired you, if this has expanded your awareness today, definitely, you know, tune into Lucia Light, definitely tune into the Healy. But there are many more out there, right? And this is where I think the biohacking world is really supporting a lot of this, this spiritual exploration because there are new devices, new awakening machines if you want to call them that that are being you know pushed out into the world every day and i would encourage everyone listening that if you're if you're if you're having troubles if you're if you don't know where to turn if meditation isn't working for you if breath work isn't working for you then it doesn't mean there's no answer and your answer might be in one of these technologies so as we've talked about today multiple times allow your inner knowing and your inner power to speak through you and allow it to guide you to the tech and the practitioner that is needed for that next step to be taken right so claudia itain thank you for joining me today it was a beautiful cosmic dance i think we did wonderfully for everyone tuning in and listening it has been a pleasure to take you on this journey if you've got some wisdom and guidance, please leave them in the comments on, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. If you are listening to this on all podcast players, you can leave your feedback over in reviews on Apple and Spotify. 
But regardless, we send you love, we send you light. And until next time here on the show, we'll see you again very soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna with me, your host, Harrison. If you gained value or this episode hit your heart, please remember to share this out with a friend, a family member, or a lover. You can also leave your love over on Apple Reviews and Spotify star feedback, and this helps me spread my frequency to more souls in need. Finally, if you want to connect with me deeper, want to reach out, interested in coaching, please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn at Harrison Ma, Ma spelled M-E-A-G-H-E-R. Sending you so much love. Tricast.